everything made me want to make this film. Um, I, I loved how powerful she was. I loved that it was the story of a woman standing out from behind the shadow of a man. I loved that, you know, it, it seems so current that it, it's a film about gender politics and sexual politics and feminism and that seems to be what we're all trying to deal with today and talk about today. So. I mean, it's slightly depressing that we haven't moved on more and we haven't figured out this problem. But, um, but you know, I, I just felt that it was an amazing thing when you get something that is a period film that feels utterly modern at the same time. Congratulations hey, on the on the film. Thank Absolutely you. Fantastic. Yep. Uh, it's a film that's that's obviously a period piece, but it feels very very contemporary, and it's something yeah, yeah. that the audience will see themselves in. I mean, did you feel that when you read the script for the first time and saw this story? Well, it's funny because at the time, none of this stuff had happened, so the Me Too movement hadn't happened or anything. So, it was. Um, it was only after we finished that all of that came out and we thought, oh my God, our film is kind of uh, is saying much more than we even imagined that it was saying. I just wanted to tell, be part of telling this woman's story. And, you know, I left school when I was very young, so I rely on my work to educate me. And because it's not all over the history books where it should be and children aren't learning about it in school, this is how we teach now. You know, so yeah. Let me ask you about the relationship you have with Kira on screen because it's it's really electric between the two. So of great, you. Isn't and it? Uh, when you was that an easy thing to, to grab between the two of you? Did you work at it or was it kind yeah, of very natural? Yeah, no, we were talking about it today. Um, you kind of either have chemistry or you don't. She's very easy to get along with, but and she's very impressive. So I don't know. We've both been doing this job for a long time, like in different mediums, but it felt very natural to. I liked her, you know, so it's easy when you like someone. Yeah, we just love I mean, I've worked with people I've hated and I still have <laughs> chemistry with them. Uh, we just spoke to one of the producers, and I didn't know this, but Wash has been working this for like 17 years. It's yeah, with passion. his partner. His Did you, was, that, was that something that came across straight away when you met yeah, him? Yeah, totally. And I was so moved by, you know, the last story of when his, his, ex, his partner uh, was dying, you know, it, the last thing that he typed on the, the uh, typewriter thing thing to say you know what what are we going to do next and it was Colette you know so it felt like Richard was here with us you know there was a day we were filming out in the country house and I said to Wash how does it feel to be here doing this without Richard and he said he's always here and it really it's very moving like I was very moved to be making a film that was such a connection to his life too you know? I just learned this is something that you spent 17 years of your life on with your, with your partner. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. Uh, wh what was it about Colette's story that, that put you so passionately into this project for all those years? Well, she was such a dynamic oh, character goodness. that she sort of spoke out from the, pe jumped out from the pages of the history and put herself into the present day. I mean, she was dealing with things with such a sense of like, her internal compass was so strong. She didn't play by society's rules. She went with her own roles. And I think that's what makes her relevant to now, the Me Too movement, the Time's Up movement, LGBTQ visibility, all the things we're talking about today Colette was very relevant for yeah and I mean it's a biopic in many respects but the one thing I loved about the movie is that it had such a fun kind of frivolity about it I mean was that a purpose thing for you as a director that you had to keep yeah it kind of it's a French story told in English and there's a genre of films that have dealt with that like Gigi Dangerous Liaisons Moulin Rouge Marie Antoinette they all have a twist of style we're not saying like the super verite style here is appropriate because it's been translated so by giving it a twist of style you actually can capture something else and it becomes like a valentine to France but at the same time it can be incredibly emotionally authentic to what those characters are going through. Yeah and also I mean it's an eclectic cast with Kiro and then someone at the end. Fantastic you must be delighted with the cast. I absolutely love the cast and most of them are here tonight so it's a bit of a reunion we're uh, gonna have a party afterwards Fantastic. I think. Fantastic. Yeah. Congrats on the movie thank you nice so much for your time. You. Pleasure. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Let me ask you about this this character, Henry. I mean, he is a, a bad guy in some respects, but he does have a lot of fun, and it seems like you had a lot of fun playing him. I mean, tell me about the character and what you saw in him when you read the script. Well, it's that. always fun playing playing the villain who says the politically incorrect thing, you know. And and I, you know, this is a film about a, a great and courageous woman who um, overcame the odds to to write her books and let her voice be heard in the world. And um, in spite of the villainy of Willie and, and the fact that he sold her books as his own and then sold the rights, you kind of like him and I, I, uh, I, I enjoy playing that, you know? I, I'm, villains, the devil usually has the best lines and um, unless they're, no one's 
altogether evil. Well, lots, some people are altogether evil, but probably evil people are really boring. But Willie's not boring. He was, he was fun. Yeah. So Lance's husband says that women writers don't sell. Why do you think it's so important for Hollywood to let women tell their own stories? Um, because there's certain parts of the female experiences that only women know. And I think it's really important in a culture where we've allowed abuse and assault to thrive. We need to be respected, and we can only be respected if we're understood. And I think that's where art and culture come in. And that's why we need to have our voices heard, our stories told, and not to hide our experiences. Just because I'm young, one more. Um, what advice would you give to your younger self? What advice would I give to my younger self? Uh, oh, God. Keep going and fuck him. <laughs> this project we just spoke to watch 17 years of his life. So much passion in this. I mean, did you feel that when you met him for the first time, read the script, that he was so passionate about this project? Yeah, I really did. I really did. And he's a very gently spoken person as well. But when you see the fire behind his eyes about this project, it's, you realise the importance of it, but also the importance that the story is told worldwide. You know, it's, it's an incredibly ironic time I think that it's come out and I think it's yeah, yeah it's great. Absolutely. I mean look Kira gives such an amazing performance and you have some great screen time with her, you have a great mm -hmm. chemistry. I mean was that an easy thing to grasp between the two of you? Because you, you share some great scenes together. Yeah well thank you. Um, I mean it's something that we that we rehearsed and we worked at and it was it was great fun. I mean she's just the most wonderful person and I really enjoyed working with her and learning from her so I feel very lucky. Was the accent difficult? Was that a challenge? It was a challenge, yeah. I've never really had to do that before, but um, an American accent that is. But I, I really loved loved it, and yeah, who knows, yeah. yeah. It's an exciting time for you. I mean, you've done some, some great TV. You've just, I think you've started on War of the Worlds, which lots of people yeah, are very, very yeah. excited about. Can you tell us about that? And it seems like such a big production for the telly. Yeah, well, that's it. it's the first British adaptation of it, which is very exciting. I think it comes out this Christmas. Um, I just, yeah, I can't wait to see it myself. I'm, uh, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. You were very present about the project, and Wash obviously spent a long time, as did you. I mean, how he was so passionate about this. It must have been great to work yeah. with him and bring this yeah, to life. It was amazing working with Wash because he knew it inside out. I mean, he'd been trying to get it made. You see, I heard 17 years. I thought it was 15 years. So one of the two, but a long time, you know, and he was, obs he is obsessed by Colette and her work and her life and her legacy. So, I mean, I think it's really nice when you work with a director who you feel you're in such safe hands with and who really knows and loves the subject. It's a period piece, but uh, are you hoping that it kind of transcends that with, with modern day audiences and because it, it, it's a, a great story? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think what was what's really interesting about this is it's it's talking about all the things that we're talking about today. It's talking about gender politics. It's talking about sexual politics. It's about feminism, but it does it in a really, really fun, entertaining way. And so I hope, you know, I felt I had such a ball making it, and I just really hope that people watching it have the same experience. And I think they will. Just tell me a little bit about your character because it's it's a fascinating character, it's a fascinating story sure. in the world with. with Dominic and all those yeah. guys. Yeah, so uh, Pierre Weber was a real life uh, playwright and, and French novelist and he um, uh, was a ghost writer for, for Willy, uh, played by Dominic West. And um, he, I mean, historically a white guy, which is amazing, so I'm, you know, Wash has colorblindly cast this role, which I'm very grateful and thankful for. And um, yeah, I mean, he was he was one of Willie's ghostwriters, and then they had their ups and downs in their relationship, and some of that is explored on screen. It's a fantastic movie, and I mean, it, it, lots of people will know it's it, see it's Keira Knightley, and it's a period drama, which mm. it is, but it, it transcends a lot of that because it is very modern and very contemporary. That it deals with a lot of contemporary subjects. I mean, did you when you read the script, did you did you feel that it was something that was very prevalent in 2018? A absolutely, and uh, you know, Wash talks about the first draft of the movie being written 17 years ago, and uh, and you know, as films do, they sometimes take a long time to get made, and this took an incredibly long time. But I just feel like everything aligned universally to make this kind of come at the time where the world needed to hear it and, and it was going to have the, and it's going to have the most impact so um, yeah it's funny how things work out like that and uh, I feel like now's the right time for this story. I mean it comes across on the screen with, with Wash in his direction that he's worked so hard on this and so passionately mm. I mean when you were met him for the first time he mm. told you the story did that come across so much earlier? I, I was guess blown you away. To say it's, yes. it's probably the best meeting with the director I've, I've, I've ever had because he was just so he, this is someone that's lived with this story for so so long and so like he, he we sat down we had a coffee and he showed me his research on this movie and I'd never seen anything like it I mean it was mind-blowing and he just knew every little nuance of the story and how he was gonna make it and how he was gonna tell it and I mean every little nuance down to the materials of the clothes that the you know the costume and like, everything and so um, and I was a fan of his before this, 
been a fan of his work before. So um, I just it was just undeniable. You just you know he's just a huge talent, and I'm you know grateful to be, be to have worked with him really. Yeah. And you've had great success on the small screen with Marcella. Yeah. Obviously now on the big screen. I mean, are you enjoying as an actor being able to play in both? Uh, sandboxes, if you like, because TV is such a big medium now, sure. as, as as film as well. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's always based on scripts, really. You know, and and uh, I mean, film and filmmaker myself. I love film. Films where my passion lies, um, but you know. Uh, TV is it's amazing. You can explore characters for a longer amount of time, and and uh, and for me, it all boils down to scripts, and and, and you know, yeah, whatever's good. Yeah, absolutely. Let's congratulate you on the film. Thank really, you. Really, really have it. you seen it? I have seen it. It's, it's fantastic. Quite good, right? It's quite good. You must be very, very pleased with the reaction so far. Um, it sold great. The critics love it. Audiences love it. It's about something important. I got to shoot a movie in the UK telling an important uh, femme-centric story, so I kind of checked all my boxes. Yeah, in terms of the, the process of making the movie, I mean, when, when did you come into the process? Did Wash come to you or was Wash you came to me with the script and, and Kira and, uh, and an incredible lookbook slash mood board. Never before or since have I seen someone visually present the story of their movie with references and, and, and it was just incredible. He had an amazing vision of what the movie could be. It exceeded only by the execution of the movie. Yeah. And you've got Kira at the, the helm of this. I mean, lots of people know from uh, period movies, which this is, but it, it kind of transcends the period drama. That It's about so much more that's so prevalent today in 2018. The bulk of my movies that have been popular, like Drive and Nightcrawler and Whiplash, have been contemporary. So I'm really interested in contemporary stories. There are so many more period stories coming out of the UK. Uh, and so that was something I realized as we opened our office here. But the story of Colette is super contemporary. Wash wrote it 17 years ago and it's become more and more relevant. Most scripts don't age well. So it's very fresh, very important, very relevant, very contemporary feeling. Uh, and you've got another film here which people are very excited to see, which is Vox, Vox Lux, which a lot of people have taken from the festivals and we've now had it added to our festival, which is really exciting. Tell us a little bit about that because it, it sounds like uh, a real uh, thrill ride, if it were, as a, as a musical. I'm working with all my favorite actresses this year. Natalie Portman <laughs> is sensational. We slid a Brit in there, Jude Law, with a thick Brooklyn accent. It's quite amazing. And uh, it's the story of uh, a teenager who gets caught up in a school shooting, survives it, writes a song at the uh, memorial service that catches on and becomes a sensation, and she becomes a pop star, like a Britney Spears. And then we jump forward 15 years and fame and the the pain and the, the pain meds have taken its toll and she's now on her comeback tour. She has written the music and it is a dark exploration of uh, terrorism, school shooting, celebrity, and yet with lots of, uh, again, we want to bring high entertainment values. The, uh, she reunites with her husband, Benjamin Milpier, who choreographs incredible dance uh, and performance sequences. So it's, it's our boldest film yet. That Thank you so much. And the fact that you've been tipped for Oscar glory, how does that make you feel? Oh, I mean, you know, it's lovely. Whether it happens, I mean, hey, that would be lovely, wouldn't it? But, you know, I mean, I think any time Oscars get mentioned with a film, I think what you know is that the film has worked and that people are really responding to it in a great way. And, and that's why you make films. That's the whole purpose of it. So that's great. And what a role in the age of Time's Up and Me Too. What does it mean to be playing such a complex, emotional role in this day and age? Um, I just found it very empowering. I thought that I stood tall when I played her. You know, I think that she was a woman that lived without shame. And she lived without shame in her sexuality and she lived without shame of her voice. And I think still, you know, women in our culture are asked to hide their truths, they're asked to hide their experience. And I think playing somebody who didn't do that, who refused to do that, was amazing. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys, Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!